What's going on guys and welcome back to the tavern and in this episode in a new light tutorial I'm going to be going over some movement techniques Some aiming techniques. I'm also going to be going over some uh, Different things within the game that you might be having questions about and also going into depth of your subclass And I know you want to have all the subclasses yet But there are some things that are similar throughout all the subclasses that I'll be going over Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. So for this first part, we are going to be going to the Cosmodrome and you're going to be going to Learning Light. This is basically going to be the start of finding your other abilities, uh, subclasses. And so you're not just using one specific thing. You're going to have access to all the other uh, abilities and classes that are in destiny as you can see here for the learning new light quest you're going to be right here on this rock and it's going to bring up uh, an action and it's going to show you that you need to meditate now for most of the other subclasses uh, you're going to unlock them uh, in different ways uh, but for this one specifically is you're going to meditate and become one with the traveler all right basically for this next part you're just going to be going around finding these parts and you're going to be meditating and they will give you new abilities to what you have now so we just received what is called an aspect a aspects modify things about your subclass or abilities so the one that we just received is called knockout we're going to put that on there. It gives you the description of what it does. And it also gives you other information like how many fragment slots that it gives you. This one gives you two fragment slots. Now, what fragments are, are abilities or um, enhancements to abilities that you have. And sometimes they give you either a negative or a positive um, stat. All right, so this one gives a negative 10 to your to your resiliency. However, if you go to a different one, it'll give you plus 10 resiliency. It all depends on the fragment itself, and they all do different things. This is build crafting at its core. I cannot stress enough that your builds will highly go off of, or majority of the time go off of what fragments you are using or aspects you are using and that will that will determine what other modifications that you'll be using in your builds all right so I wanted to show you guys something um, when you get a new ability or when you have other abilities enhanced the increases in either damage mobility or whatever it is it'll show you on the left hand side right above your super bar all right I wanted to show you what knockout was and to proc knockout, you have to kill something or injure something or break their shields. Now, knockout is a buff that you receive, and it's going to enhance either your melee ability and it's going to enhance your uh, weapon damage. All right. So you're simply going to kill something and you see it pop up on the left hand side. That is where all your buffs or nerfs, depending on what it is will pop up and of course a timer associated with it all right i just received a new fragment a new fragment is something you attach to an aspect if you remember you put on the aspect it gives you fragment slots now i'm actually able to put on a fragment because i just got one and this one says while surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage and it also gives me a plus 10 strength for my stats which is great so you're going to apply that and now you have these abilities. So I just got done with the mission. It brought me back to where I was at when I first meditated. And you can see here, right when I came back, there's a chest. These are golden chests that are hidden around each map or each planet that you can unlock. Now you can only unlock these one time, but they usually have really good loot in them. And if you are a triumph completionist, basically, uh, you'll want to find all of these, so they give you your first one. You just come up, collect loot, 
there you go i got some glimmer i got some materials and i got a new helmet now whatever comes out may vary all right this next section it's going to show you what a lost sector is a lost sector is basically a different part of the map and it usually has uh certain enemies in it and they're usually a little bit harder and has a boss at the end and at the end when you kill the boss you get a chest uh with different types of loot you can also do a heroic version of that and it'll give you a lot better loot but for now i wanted to show you basically what a lost sector is and what you're looking for because sometimes they're hard to find all right so you're going to be looking for this symbol right here this symbol right here will show you or tell you like hey there is an entrance to a lost sector very close all right just remember that symbol I know it's giving you where to go, but I just wanted to show you. As you can see, it is right here again. It is showing the doorway of where to enter. Now, again, I know I have a marker that is showing me where to go, but for the rest of the game after this, unless it's a very specific quest that you need to go in the Lost Sector, it will not guide you directly to it. It is those symbols that will show you where the lost sector is at and eventually you will know exactly where they are doing them so much now right now would be a perfect time to show you the slide and shoot this will be very beneficial in pvp and gambit when you're invading going against another player you can use it also in pve but i just wanted to show you the concept of it and how it works so you can see i have enemies there right but you don't want to just stand out here and start shooting at them because you are out in the open and don't have any cover so what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide like that okay obviously throw a grenade you're gonna slide like so all i'm doing is tapping sprint then my crouch and then back over and what you want to do is you want to face where you want to go for your slide and you're gonna flick either your thumbstick or your mouse where you want to aim as you see i'm aiming this way i flick it to where the enemies are now let's add in some shooting and aiming so i'm gonna go aim go aim go aim and you can keep doing this back and forth until you feel comfortable on aiming down sights and knowing where your enemy's at okay so i know that guy's he's just kind of hanging out there I'm gonna slide through, pop them. These guys slide through, pop, come back. Okay, slide through, then wasn't there, came back, slide through, pop, come back. Slide through, pop, come back. But you see the basic concept of the slide and shoot? It gives you that mobility key and it brings you, so you're not always out of cover. All right, cover is a big thing. So you got to make sure you have your key bindings and um, your hands where you're most comfortable at because there's a lot of inputs that you got to do. You got to you gotta walk, you got to sprint, you got to slide, aim, and shoot. You can also do a 180. That works really well, like say if someone's following you. Another thing I want to show you guys is sprinting ability. Now for hunters, it doesn't really matter when you want to dodge because you're going to dodge no matter what if you're sprinting running um of course when you're jumping as soon as you hit the ground you can do it now for my titans and for my warlocks this is where this comes in now you can see here i'm at a stop i'm kind of walking i pop my shield right he did it at a standing point you i was standing now I'm going to wait for my shield to go up and I will show you the sprinting method. The sprinting method works very, very well when you want to push out farther than the wall itself so you can see what's behind you and to pop that ability faster. And I will show you here in a second. Okay, I just got my shield back and I will show you what I talk about uh, sprint ability. So I'm going to start sprinting and I'm going to pop it. See how that was a little bit different 
where I was actually sprinting and he gave a little shoulder tug into it. I wasn't just standing completely still. And you can also see that I was able to push it out a little more and get a little more coverage. And I didn't have to actually expose myself for way too long. That is a great tool to use for not only PvE, but PvP. Same thing for Warlocks. You are able to sprint and slide. You can sprint and slide or you can sprint and do it. And you are able to pop your Rift or Warlock and do it the same way. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is damage numbers. Now, when you shoot them in the body, it's going to be white. When you get a precision shot or headshot, it is going to be yellow. I'll show you here. See how it was in yellow? That is a critical shot or a headshot. Now, not all enemies have the same crit points as others. So these the guys have a head, right? That is where their critical point is. Some others have it in the center of their body. Other places have it in weird spots. Like there's an enemy called the Scorn and it is their lantern. I will show you guys that in a different video, but I just kind of want to make you aware of the different crit parts in enemies. So I wanted to show you a crit spot real quick on someone that doesn't have a head. See that big eyeball thing? It's right in the middle. That is their crit spot. Of course, he has a head. That is their crit spot. This little guy, see how he has a kind of like the glowing part right there? That is his critical spot. So not all critical spots are the same. So now I'm going to explain finishers. And it's basically how it sounds. It's when you finish an enemy when they're at almost death. Now a little indicator is going to pop above their head. Like so. Whatever your finisher button is, you're going to press that. And you're going to do a finisher. Now finishers are great tools later on when you need to finish an enemy and you want to make sure you don't die in the process because of how close you are and another thing is is that there are modifications that you can add to the finisher that'll either give you ammo back um give you a charge with light or other things so finishers are very very good you cannot do them in pvp but you can do them in every pve um content the only other thing that you cannot do it to is bosses. You cannot do a finisher on a boss. But anything below a boss or what is considered a boss can have a finisher done on them. Basically from this point on, you're gonna be going through the rest of the quest, the Guardian Rises, and it's gonna kinda of take you through the game itself and get you prepared for doing other content. I highly suggest finishing this quest line before trying any other activities. Doing this, you will fine tune your skills within the game and you will come out as a better player and have better knowledge on what to expect for these future activities. All right, guys, this concludes this video. I hope all the information I gave you will help you out in your journey in destiny. If you didn't miss the first video, the link will be in the description below or after this video. And if you have any other questions about what I went over or anything else that you'd like to see in the near future, leave a comment below. Let me know what you, th what, uh, you would like to learn. Also, if you guys can, please like the video, subscribe if you're new, and click that bell for the notifications. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care.